Hello and welcome back to another video. In this problem, we're told that in the xy plane, the graph of the equation y is equal to negative x squared plus 9x minus 100 intersects the line y equals c at exactly one point. And we're asked, what is the value of c? So the first thing we have to understand is what does it mean for this equation to only intersect this line at one point? Well, we can see here that we have a quadratic. So let's just draw a rough graph of what that might look like. We have a negative term in front of the x squared term, which means it is facing down. So it might look something like this. y equals c is just a horizontal line at the y value, that is c. So we could just do a couple of examples here of lines. And notice that for all of these lines, right, including the axis, they either intersect at two points like these three down here, or they don't intersect at any points, like this one up here. That is, except for a very specific case, where the line is intersecting with the vertex of the parabola. So y equals c, c is the value, the y value of that vertex. So what we have to do is convert this quadratic into its vertex form. What does that look like? Well, we have y, is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k. We want to get it into this form where hk is the vertex. And then our value of k is what we're actually going to have to worry about for the value of c. So how do we go about doing this? Well, we can first split up the x terms and the constant. So if y is equal to negative x squared plus 9x, separate these two, they're going to go into this term, minus 100, which is going to go over here. So what is the value of a? Well, a is just the coefficient of the x squared term, right? You pull it out in front, and you have to, sub, you have to divide all of the terms by it, but you just pull it out. In this case, it's just negative 1. So we get negative x squared, and then you have to pull it out of 9, which gives you negative 9x. And then what we want to do here is we want to complete the square. Right? We want to turn this into something that is squareable. So we're going to add a certain value. Right? We don't have to worry about it yet. And then don't forget about the minus 100. And then since we added this, we have to subtract it to keep the value of the entire equation equal. However, since there's a minus sign out front, we're actually subtracting it, right? Since you would redistribute the negative. So we're subtracting this value from the original equation. Therefore, we have to add it back in at the end. Okay, so what is this actual value? Well, what you do is you take the value of the x term, which in this case is negative nine, you divide it by two, and then you square it. Okay, what does that end up looking like? Well, nine squared or negative nine squared is 81. Two squared is four, so we get 81 fourths. So we just add that in there. And then what we do is we add it here, 81 over four. Okay. Now we have a formula which we can turn into something that is in vertex form. So what we do here, we say negative, and then we, what is, we have x minus h, what is h? Well, h is the term before it's been squared. Because when we actually do x minus h, there's gonna be an h squared term, which is gonna give you 81 over four. So this nine over, um, negative nine over two is that term. Okay, and then of course we have to square this and then negative 100 plus 81 over four. How do we do that? Well, we wanna get these into a common denominator. So we subtract 100 times four over four, add 81 over four. This is gonna get these both over four. Just ignoring the square term right now because we've already done with it. Negative 100 times 4 is negative 400 over 4 plus 81 over 4. 
And then the last step is to add these. Negative 400 plus 81 is negative 319 over four. So like I said in the beginning, we're looking for the y value of the vertex. And that is k, which means k is negative 319 over four, which means c is our final answer.